Have you ever woken up feeling like your mind is still in a fog, even after what you thought was a full night's sleep? Or maybe you found yourself standing in the middle of a room, completely forgetting why you walked in there in the first place. It's that frustrating feeling, that little flicker of worry, when a word is right on the tip of your tongue but just won't come out. We often dismiss these moments as just a normal part of getting older. But what if I told you that the key to a clearer, sharper mind tomorrow morning isn't just about how long you sleep, but has everything to do with how you're lying while you do it? It sounds almost too simple to be true, doesn't it? For decades, we've been told to focus on getting seven to eight hours of sleep. But new and exciting science is revealing a hidden, incredibly powerful process that happens in our brains every single night. It's like a secret cleaning crew that only works while we're in a deep sleep. The problem is some of us, without even knowing it, are accidentally blocking the doorways and getting in the crew's way. In this video, we're gonna explore the three main sleeping positions on your back, on your stomach, and on your side. And I promise you, by the end of our time together, you will understand which position supercharges this cleaning process helping to protect your memory, sharpen your focus, and keep your brain healthy and vibrant for all the years to come. Before we dive into the science, if you're committed to keeping your mind as healthy and active as your spirit, take a moment to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications. We share the kind of practical health wisdom that can make a real difference in your daily life. And I'm always so curious to see how far our community reaches. Are you watching from the United States? from Canada, Australia, or somewhere else in the world, please drop a comment below and let me know where you're from. It's wonderful to know we're all on this journey together. All right, let's talk about your brain. Every single day, your brain is working incredibly hard. It's processing thoughts, creating memories, and controlling every move you make. And just like any busy city, this hard work creates waste products, metabolic debris that needs to be cleared out. For a long time, scientists were puzzled about how the brain cleaned itself. Unlike the rest of your body, which has a network of lymphatic vessels to drain away waste, the brain seemed to be missing this system. But then they discovered something amazing, something called the glymphatic system. Don't worry about the fancy name. Just think of it as your brain's personal dishwasher. While you sleep, a special fluid called cerebrospinal fluid, or CSF, is pumped through your brain tissue. It flows along these special channels, collecting all the toxic proteins and waste products that have built up during the day. It then flushes them out of the brain where they can be disposed of by the body. This is one of the most important maintenance jobs your body performs. And here's the critical part. This glymphatic system is almost 10 times more active when you're asleep than when you're awake. Sleep isn't just about resting, it's about actively cleaning and repairing your brain. So where does your sleeping position fit into all of this? Well, it turns out that the position you lie in can either help or hinder this flushing process. It can either open the floodgates for that cleaning fluid or create a bottleneck. Let's start by looking at the position that many sleep experts consider to be the most problematic, especially as we get older. Let's talk about sleeping on your stomach. Many people find this position comforting, it can feel cozy and secure, but from a physiological standpoint, it can be quite stressful for the body. To breathe, you have to turn your head almost 90 degrees to one side. Imagine holding that position for six, seven, or even eight hours. This puts a tremendous amount of strain on the vertebrae in your neck and can lead to misalignment. You might wake up with a stiff neck, shoulder pain, or even headaches. That constant strain can also compress the nerves and, importantly, the arteries that run through your neck, the very arteries responsible for carrying fresh, oxygenated blood up to your brain. If the blood flow to your brain is even slightly compromised all night long, night after night, your brain isn't getting the full supply of oxygen and nutrients it needs to repair itself. Furthermore, sleeping face down, often with part of your face buried in a pillow, can obstruct your airways, making it harder to breathe deeply. This can lead to lower oxygen levels throughout the night. For your brain, which is an oxygen-hungry organ, this is a significant problem. So while it might feel comfortable in the short term, 
Stomach sleeping is essentially putting your neck, spine, and circulatory system in a stressed, unnatural position for a third of your life. In the context of our brain's cleaning system, it's like trying to run a dishwasher with a kink in the water hose. The flow is just not going to be optimal. If you are a dedicated stomach sleeper, please don't feel discouraged. Acknowledging this is the first step, and a little later, I'll share some gentle, practical tips to help you transition to a healthier position. It's not about making a drastic change overnight, but about a gradual, supported shift. Now, let's move on to the second position, the one that physical therapists often praise, sleeping on your back. From a purely structural perspective, sleeping on your back can be fantastic. It allows your head, neck, and spine to rest in a neutral alignment, which can prevent a lot of aches and pains. It distributes your body weight evenly, reducing pressure on any single point for your bones and joints. This is often seen as the gold standard. So you might be thinking, great, this must be the best one for my brain too. But this is where things get a bit more complicated, especially for those of us over 60. The biggest issue with sleeping on your back is its relationship with gravity and your airway. When you lie on your back, the base of your tongue and your soft palate can collapse backward, partially blocking your airway. For many people, this results in snoring. While we often make jokes about snoring, it's your body's signal that air is struggling to get through. More seriously, for a significant number of older adults, this can lead to or worsen a condition called obstructive sleep apnea. This is where that airway blockage becomes so severe that you actually stop breathing for short periods throughout the night. These pauses can last for 10 seconds, or much longer, and they can happen hundreds of times a night. Every time you stop breathing, the oxygen level in your blood plummets. Your brain senses this emergency and sends a jolt through your body to wake you up just enough to gasp for air. You might not even remember these awakenings, but they wreck the quality of your sleep, preventing you from ever reaching those deep restorative stages where the glymphatic system does its best work. Think about it. The brain's cleaning crew is all suited up and ready to go, but every few minutes an alarm goes off and they have to stop what they're doing. The cleaning process is constantly being interrupted. Even more concerning is the direct impact of that oxygen deprivation. Repeated drops in oxygen are incredibly damaging to brain cells and are strongly linked to high blood pressure, heart problems, and very clearly to cognitive decline and an increased risk of dementia. So, while sleeping on your back might be wonderful for your spine, if it causes you to snore heavily or contributes to sleep apnea, it could be inadvertently starving your brain of oxygen and preventing that essential nightly cleanup. It's a critical trade-off to be aware of. I know, this might be a lot to take in. Is any of this surprising you so far? If you're finding this information valuable and it's giving you some food for thought, I would so appreciate it if you take a moment to tap the like button. It's a small gesture, but it truly helps our channel get this message out to other seniors who might benefit from hearing it. Thank you so much for that. Okay, so if stomach sleeping is problematic and back sleeping has some serious potential risks for brain health, where does that leave us? It leaves us with our third and final position, the one that a growing body of research is pointing to as the champion for keeping our brains healthy as we age, and that is sleeping on your side. This is where we come back to that amazing glymphatic system. The groundbreaking research in this area came from scientists at Stony Brook University. They use sophisticated imaging technology to watch the brains of rodents as they slept in different positions. What they saw was nothing short of revolutionary they discovered that the flow of that cleansing cerebrospinal fluid, the very fluid that washes away the brain's waste products, was dramatically more efficient when the subjects were sleeping in a lateral position on their side. Compared to sleeping on the back or stomach, the side sleeping positions seemed to open up the pathways in the brain, allowing for a much more effective and thorough flush Think of it like trying to clean a dirty driveway. You could just sprinkle some water on it, which is what might be happening when the flow is restricted. Or you could open the hose up all the way and powerfully blast the grime away. Sleeping on your side appears to do the latter for your brain. 
And what exactly is it washing away? This is the most exciting part. The glymphatic system is especially good at clearing out toxic proteins, specifically two called beta amyloid and tau. If those names sound familiar, it's because they are the infamous villains in the story of Alzheimer's disease. These are the proteins that clump together to form the sticky plaques and tangled fibers that clog up the brain, damage nerve cells, and lead to cognitive decline. The ability of your brain to effectively clear these proteins out every single night is thought to be one of the most important protective measures against age-related neurodegenerative diseases. By choosing to sleep on your side, you are actively, physically helping your brain to take out the trash that could otherwise accumulate and cause serious problems down the road. You are making a conscious choice to support your brain's natural built-in defense system. Naturally, the next question is, does it matter which side, left or right? The science on brain cleaning doesn't show a strong preference for one side over the other. The main benefit comes from simply being in a lateral position. However, looking at the rest of the body, there are some subtle differences. Sleeping on your left side is often recommended for digestive health. Due to the shape and position of our stomach, left side sleeping can help reduce acid reflux and heartburn. It also may improve circulation as it allows gravity to help blood flow back to your heart. On the other hand, some very specific studies have suggested that for people with certain heart conditions like congestive heart failure, sleeping on the right side might be slightly less stressful on the heart. The best advice? For most of us, the most important thing is to just get on a side, any side. You can alternate throughout the night, or you can simply choose the side that feels most comfortable for you. Listen to your body. The goal is to make side sleeping your default, comfortable, go-to position. But I know what many of you might be thinking right now. That all sounds great, but sleeping on my side hurts. My shoulder aches, my hip starts to burn, and I just end up rolling back onto my back anyway. This is an incredibly common and valid concern. It's pointless to know the best position if you can't actually stay in it comfortably. Growing older doesn't mean giving up. It means we have to use smarter strategies. So let's not just talk about the what. Let's talk about the how. How can you transform side sleeping from a painful chore into a comfortable healing experience? The secret, my friends, is pillows. Strategic pillow placement is the key. First, let's talk about the pillow under your head. This is the foundation. Your pillow needs to be the right height and firmness to keep your head and neck in a perfectly straight line with your spine. If your pillow is too flat, your head will sag downwards, straining your neck. If it's too thick, it will push your head upwards, creating a different kind of strain. You're looking for that Goldilocks pillow just right. A good test is to have someone look at you from behind as you lie on your side. Your spine, from your tailbone all the way up to your head, should look like a straight horizontal line. Now for the real game changer, the one that solves the most common complaints, a pillow between your knees, when you lie on your side without support, your top leg naturally falls forward and down. This pulls on your pelvis and twists your lower back, creating strain on both your hip and your spine. It's often the source of that nagging morning backache or hip pain. By simply placing a firm pillow or a folded blanket between your knees and ankles, you lift that top leg so it's parallel with the bottom one. This instantly aligns your hips, pelvis, and spine. The pressure is released. It's such a simple adjustment, but the relief it provides can be profound. Next, let's address shoulder pain, another common barrier. When you lie on your side, your top shoulder can often roll forward and inward, putting pressure on the shoulder joint you're lying on. The solution? Hug a pillow. Seriously. Embracing a pillow in front of your chest provides support for your top arm and shoulder, preventing it from collapsing down. It keeps your chest open and your shoulders stacked properly. So, picture this setup. You have a supportive pillow under your head, a firm pillow between your knees, and another one to hug in front of you. You've essentially created a supportive nest that holds your body in perfect alignment. If you're still worried about rolling onto your back during the night, you can use one final trick. Place a long, firm pillow. 
like a body pillow, behind your back, this acts as a gentle wall, making it much more difficult for you to roll over in your sleep. Please be patient with yourself. If you've been a back or stomach sleeper for 50 years, your body won't change its habit overnight. Start by just trying to fall asleep in this supported side position. If you wake up in the middle of the night on your back, don't scold yourself. Just gently roll back to your side and readjust your pillows. Over time, with consistency, your body will learn that this new position is comfortable and safe and it will become your new normal. So let's quickly recap what we've learned. Stomach sleeping puts significant strain on your neck and spine and can compromise blood flow to the brain. Back sleeping, while good for alignment, can be a real problem if it causes snoring or sleep apnea, as it can repeatedly deprive your brain of vital oxygen and interrupt the deep cleaning process. And side sleeping, our clear winner, opens up the glymphatic channels, allowing your brain to perform its essential nightly cleanup, flushing away the toxic proteins linked to cognitive decline. Remember, the eight hours you spend in bed each night are not passive, wasted time. It is an active period of healing, restoration, and defense, especially for your brain. Making a simple change in your posture during those hours is one of the most powerful and proactive steps you can take to safeguard your cognitive health for the future. I know that thinking about brain health, memory, and the risks of diseases like Alzheimer's can feel overwhelming and even a little scary. We've all seen its impact on friends or family, and we all wanna protect our own independence and clarity of mind for as long as possible. But I want you to leave here today feeling empowered, not fearful. You are not helpless in the face of aging. Knowledge is power, and now you have the knowledge to make a change that matters. Every night that you choose to settle onto your side, supported by your pillows, you are performing a profound act of self-care. You are actively participating in the health and longevity of your own mind. This isn't about fearing what's to come. It's about embracing the wisdom we have now to age with strength, grace, and vitality. Now, I would genuinely love to hear from you. What is your go-to sleeping position right now? And after hearing all this information, are you considering making a change? Please share your story, your thoughts, or any questions you might have in the comments section below. I do my best to read every single one. Our shared experiences create a community where we can all learn and support each other. If this video has helped you or given you a new perspective on the power of sleep, please do me the favor of hitting that like button. It truly does mean a lot, and it helps YouTube show this video to others who need this information. And of course, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and click that little notification bell. We have so many more science-backed practical tips coming your way to help you thrive in your golden years. And for one last thing, if you are with me, if you are committed to trying this and taking this step to care for your brain, just type the word healthy in the comments. Let's make a collective commitment right here and now to our long-term well-being. Thank you so much for spending this time with me today. Sleep well tonight, stay sharp tomorrow, and always remember that every single night gives you a fresh opportunity to our Temple Lush 